Hello guys, I'm Florence Lukaki from Informatrix Arts Production. Yes. So please like, share and comment uh, to our YouTube channel for more educating uh, videos. When Rassian finally came to the bedroom, she found it afflicted and quiet. Sayo! Sayo, what are you doing? She did not answer. What could be across this time? If it was not the mistreatment of their father, it will be a failure for not persuading their father to allow them to go back to Nakuru to join Egerton University. It is true I promised to talk to Papa about the matter, but I have not found the appropriate opportunity. She knew the importance of the subject to her sister, so she did not want to rush it. But this afternoon, my attention was drawn. But for a brief moment, when she stood with... Joseph, from what? In the living room. I felt justifiably separated from my sister. But isn't it natural? We are not kids anymore, so we are going to be physically separated. That afternoon, as she stood in the living room, watching the, sing, uh, the children singing and dancing. But when I spoke to Joseph from what about music, I felt restless. She was in love. It was as if she stood on the threshold of her own room. On a mountain top. Excited in waiting for the sun to rise above the dawn. And she feels a breathtakingly beautiful woman. Later that night, lying above to her sister, she allowed her mind to float fittingly. It was a long night for both girls, each one of them awoke. But in deep thought. Away with the barbaric culture. Away with the type of life. Isn't there any guarantee of justice to this life? She walked and did she know what he has in her eyes. How could I have found a man that could fill the void in my heart? Only to lose into this ancient, doubtful ancestral land. I am angry at everyone in Asila, but most especially at Monty Miran, who I blame for ruining my relationship with Joseph Pamwa. The mere mention of Joseph Pamwa evoked light feelings in her heart. I wonder if he is as sleepless as I am, thinking but about not, me right now. But not all of us gone. He promised that he will come tomorrow to see me, and if my parents allow, he will train me in traditional coming back. The young situation we was. I feel, I feel like my world is spinning. The pain in her heart was like a bruising atom out of a blow. The threat of circumcision is becoming real. Confusion. Oh, oh, let me say that we should undergo the ritual. Fear. I remember. I remember when then Kamuratani came to visit us. She was an old woman of about 60 whose back and shoulder stood straight. The most startling thing about her were her eyes. They were clear, bright, and inquisitive. What sent she for deep to the sea stomach? What's all the Murunya? It was a blade like tool, shaped like a smoothing blend blend. Then Kamuratani removed it with a claw like hand. She demonstrated with her fingers. How she would turn young girls into young women. This young girl thought to the barbaric operation. She was scared. So many things are going wrong. And the young man who spoke rudely to us. He kept on reminding them that they were into Ian Mengalana. Would he one day grab us and take us to the Nkamuratani and have our old Murunya transform us into decent women? God forbid! But her only ally was her sister Taiyo. I trusted Tayo to speak to Papa about her enrollment at the Egerton University. But she has not even tried. We need to persuade her even more. It was funny when the two girls went to prepare breakfast. Uh, my name is Kolo. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget also to hit that notification uh, button uh, on your screen. Uh, it was time for Pasine, Olekaelo, and Jen Milanoi to have a long and troubled night. Husband and wife had gone to bed early. They turn and turn and turn again like the Ngili is being roasted in the, the fire. fire. Olekaelo said, one continuous. I cast the day, met Oloi Sudo. Seeing what had befallen him that afternoon, he wondered. I wonder what devil had convinced me to carry up this to such an evil man. Starting from a Puya demand that all his glory had made on him in Rwanda. I wonder if he's a member of a shadow cult. Which he had heard being mentioned earlier, also known as Il Masoni. He was said that the car's drive on blackmail and extortion. A lucrative money making business proposal was to be had and to be handed over to an unsuspecting businessman by a member of the cult. Within a short time, the business would move. Then the businessman would prosper. Then, then the, the who's 
will begin. begin. The businessman was to offer sacrifices of his loved ones to the gods of the country. And the beloved ones of the son's wife and daughter. When he went to bed that night, he wondered, What in God's name have you done to deserve such a torment? He cried silently and bitterly. Even though I'm a successful businessman, but I've acted so perilously as to risk the lives of my family. He knew all his stories, criminal records for a long time, but he could not tell why he turned a blind eye to his enticement. You are one by your spare friend and mentor. Yes. He warned you. He yes. warned you. Yes, he warned me, told me that playing with Olosudori was like tying with a live electric wire. He knew Olosudori in pursuit of his success, and only the successful men are the ones who mattered in the society. Success was attainment, good fortune, and gratitude. He was even given big names such as Mose and Moshimio. On the other hand, Mama Mlele also turned, close, read, and try like a woman in labor. Is this what I said to achieve in Nasila? No. Certainly not. She thought that Nasila was beckoning them back into a phone, just the way a mother will beckon back away her children. I thought Nasila would give me a chance to marry off my two daughters to two respectful men. She thought Nasila was calling them to share in his good fortune, which has been celebrated by the people back to the community. A voice in the dark of the night told them that they had received their just rewards. Well, they wanted prosperous sons in law, and Oloisudori was one such in law, for he was thinking rich. Can Oloisudori be my son in law? God forbid! Not a light to happen. Culture gave her room for mass action. Mass action was swift, vindictive, and decisive. She recalled an incident when she was about 10 years old, when an old man was being infatuated by a 14 year old girl who was milking her mother's cows. And the man decided to seduce the girl. When the girl was infuriated, she went and reported the case to her mother. Well, the girl's mother appealed to the women's court. Well, immediately the village wireless was activated and it spread the news like a bushfire during a drought. All hell broke loose. Women pawned in the homestead in the island, beating the van thoroughly and sleeping him naked. You know, after getting to their homes, the women did not give the men any food because there was no meal because they had not built the cows. And the houses were cool because no fire had been lit. Wait, Mama Milanoi wondered where the culture had left. Was there no one to tame the legs of all story? Had the culture become obsolete, impotent, and useless? A dark, a voice in the dark told her. Mark culture was still intact the, like the rivers of Mark and the waters of Nasila. Well, Nasila River had been there as far back as the Nasila people could remember. It had sustained the life of men and beasts from time immemorial. But that was no more. I've seen. People were washing vehicles. People were washing smelling hides and skins and emptying sacks of agricultural chemicals and other offending poisonous pollutants into the Nasila River. It will not be long before the life-giving waters of Nasila begin to sicken and kill. The founder of the Nasila River had intended that the river could regulate the life of the people, and indeed, it did. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, share, and hit the subscribe button.